So, um, welcome everyone. Uh, this is a session uh, about uh, helping regular desktop users not need their local Debian geeks. Uh, how can we iron out the rough parts of the distribution for regular people? Uh, Lunar is uh, presenting, and everybody, thank you, Lunar. So, um, this is about our favor. Um, about, yeah, how could we make, like, at least I'm asking a simple question. How could we make desktop users need their local Debian geeks less? Um, I have a few forwards, and then we can uh, go up for discussion. I have a few technical points I'd like to uh, discuss, but if you, some more uh, technical issues pop up, it, it's good. Um, so, I'm talking about. Uh, <clears throat> A not working setup. I should have stated that before. Huh, interesting. This is not going to work like that. Anyway, uh, probably. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I was trying to do that too geeky, probably. Uh, huh. And now I'm lost on my own screen, shame. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Come on. Anyway, so that were my slides. So I'm going just to follow and, and whatever. Uh, so, I mean, that was a f uh, Okay, so I'm talking about desktop users. What? Uh, I'm not hearing you. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, i just uh, watching on IRC. So if people are on IRC, if you have questions, please highlight me, Bubul, on IRC, and I relay the questions or comments or whatever. So sorry about that. Um, so I'm talking about desktop users. Um, those are users in... in well, I'm, when, I when I talk about desktop users, I mean people having some work to do. And I would like to actually do that work. And in order to realize what they need to, to uh, realize, they need to use a computer. But I'm not talking about people who actually uh, have a w like work as developers, or who even are computer enthusiasts, like power users, like people who would subscribe to Demian user main list are power users in my opinion. Um, I'm talking about users as actually um, I would like to, to, to see them having their computers not get into the way of the work they want to achieve. That's, that's who I'm talking about. Um, and I mean, Debian is, a, in my opinion, a great distro to support those users because we have stable release. And I mean, when you want to realize something, having habits on how you do that is a good thing because it enables you to actually stop thinking about how you do something, but the things that you want to do. Um, so I'm advocating that we, we as Debian ship stable release releases and those are good because they enable our users to have habits. And I mean, yeah, two years, two years, three years is a good time because I mean, I'm, if, uh, if my system changed every two, three years, then I can, I don't know, uh, take the time when I, I'm available enough to actually rethink, uh, think again about my current habits. But for example, Ubuntu with its every six month release cycle, it, um, I've seen that this, that rhythm of, of release uh, get into the, in the way of people actually wanting to do work because they had to rethink again and again how they were like, actually using the computer every six months. Um, and so, yeah, Debian is great, and I'm actually I've, I've I've done that. I've convinced many friends actually using Debian, and I was I'm happy about it. Uh, but my issue with that is is now I have to spend less time with them and more time with their computer. And actually, I'd like, I'd like Debian, I'd like us, please help me. 
I like to spend more time with my friends and not with the computer or not fixing the computer or not discussing uh, the bug they encountered with Debian. Um, and so that's, that's why I, I wanted to have this session with you. It's just like, how, w what are the rough edges that we still have and that we could actually fix? So I'm not getting a phone call at 11 p.m. and, and asking, hey, uh, I have this black screen. Uh, can you help me? You know? So um, please join the, the, um, the Gobi. Uh, so Gobi is at, so its software is Gobi 0.5, and it's still not working well. Gobi dash 1.5. The server is called gobi.debian.net, and the document is something like DC11, both local, less local geeks. Is there other people connecting to that? Or is my Gobi broken? You're connected? OK, so my Gobi was out of sync. Uh, I'm putting that on screen. Wow, lots of people. Huh. Is that big enough? Uh, so is there like any, anyone like would like to comment before we get to some technical issues I've, I've found out? Not right now? Okay. Um, the first thing uh, uh, I have been able to, to, to find, and this one thing I'd like to fix is the... So, well, I think the Debian installer now is at the point when where most people can actually uh, do uh, an installation of Debian by themselves. Um, if you use the guided partitioning, which is the hardest part, in my opinion, of a fresh install, then, I mean, you're good. If you don't want to have any kind of other uh, operating system on your, um, on your computer, then uh, I think it's okay to... to the, the, like, I think the Debian installer mostly fits. One of the questions that has puzzled many, many friends is the one who says, what is your domain? Like, that one is, is, is I mean, so I have to explain them, okay. Um, so you see, for example, when you actually use uh, bugs.debian.org, then debian.org is a domain and bugs is your machine. But then they say, no, bugs is not, are not my machine, and I'm not on Debian, and... So uh, they get confused. Okay. Um, so. I have been pondering that for a while, and I've been, when we did the, the um, release, online release party for Squeeze, we actually discussed that a little bit. Um, there is several issues. Like, we can't just hide the question, what is your domain? Because one of the features of DI, which is quite useful, is that it can fetch a domain from DHCP. And so if you are doing a large-scale installation, that makes sense to actually uh, set, up, set, set a domain and have it like, automatically fetched. Uh, so one of the um, way to solve that that I was thinking about is uh, actually 
having not like currently you have a question like what is your host name and what is your domain name. I would like to have to, us to actually merge that into one single question. That would be what is your system name, and that could be, for example, for my laptop Kendra, without any domain name, or if you're installing bugs.debian.org, then it would be bugs.debian.org with the full qualified domain name. Um, do you think that it will help? Um, I think that people are confused by the idea that their computer even has a name, honestly. Um, I mean, I know that there's an RFC that suggests how to name your computer, but most people haven't read it. Um, and it just, if, I think splitting that out by dots is going to confuse people who might have a, they might just say, oh, well, this is MySpace laptop. Is the host name going to be MySpace laptop? Um, I don't know how to resolve that problem, but I don't know that merging them into one question is actually going to going to solve the whole thing. Um, merging them into uh, one question is uh, even uh, making it worse uh, b uh, because uh, you're presupposing uh, that uh, p people will know that uh, the first point uh, separates the system name uh, from the uh, domain name. So well, it requires even more knowledge. My point is that you don't need to have a domain name if you have a laptop, and most laptops shouldn't have a domain name set, actually, because they jump up from network to network. That's my, my opinion. And, uh, and, and also, um, yeah, so, so that's, I mean, you don't have to know that the dots separate if you just want to name your laptop without a domain name. That's my point. But, yeah. I think we need to take a step back and uh, figure out how to actually make the desktop more useful. And uh, let me give, bin, begin with a question. How many of you are installing the Weezy desktop regularly? Like once a week or more? Weezy, you mean? Weezy, yeah. The next Weezy. one. That's what okay, one so we're supposed to be fixing, right? The daily images. Well, the daily images or PXE or whatever. Uh, okay. How is money doing that weekly or more? Yeah. That's what we have to do to actually test it and fix it. Uh, and uh, for, uh, for Lenny, for Edge, for Woody, I've been doing that uh, in Debian EDU and finding so many misfeatures and stupid things and packages that are missing. And uh, I seem to be the only one doing it. So I think we need to look at the process that will actually get us a useful desktop. If you install a fresh desktop installation in GNOME and discover there is no pop-up when an upgrade is available, then you actually have to address that. If you discover that the default browser doesn't handle text files properly, you have to address that. If you discover that the fonts that are used in almost every web pages are missing, and these are all problems I've seen up through the years, uh, you have to address that. And uh, the problem I, th I think we have is that most people just use their la desktop, their laptop, and they install one packet to fix their problem and forget about it and don't reali realize that the desktop task in task cell is missing that vital piece of packet that's maybe a few kilobytes but makes the user experience so much better. Uh, and we don't really uh, seem to be doing <coughs> much to in integrate all the nice thing that Ubuntu has uh, added to their system to make things work properly for normal users. And, I really think we need to step back and stop focusing on getting our desktop experience better. We need to see, would I be able to help, well, pick any random person you know that's not really a computer skilled person like your grandmother or something, would I be able to help her through this process over the phone? And if you can't, well, we need to make it simpler because we need to get to a point where you can actually help people over, over the phone with a really simple process like upgrading the distribution or adding a video codec, or making sure that Flash is working, or whatever stupid uh, thing you have to get uh, installed to actually get web pages or documents or whatever working. Because otherwise, the Linux distribution is, is getting in the way. And we like to think we have the superior uh, position when we are debating software. But uh, to a lot of people, we are like the retarded uh, cousin that don't, doesn't really understand the words you are using and uh, doesn't really understand the documents you are sending to them because they are like less skilled and less uh, 
okay in their heads. And to actually get away from that, we need to make sure it's so easy to explain what the problem is and so easy to understand what the problem is if you're missing Windows uh, media f drivers or if you're missing Flash. Uh, otherwise, we are just being the, the stupid uh, uh, computer system that doesn't work properly. And, yeah. I mean, I, I do agree uh, with all that, and that's why I, I actually wanted to make that bot happen. What, what I'm, I'm going through right now is like I've... When I, I, so I've, done, I've not done that work on Wheezy, but I've done the, that work on Stable. And that's, I'm one like to, to ask you to go through a few technical points that we could actually change. And I do not feel like I'm told to change alone, so that's why I wanted to discuss with more people first. But I totally agree that we should actually have, take this habit of uh, uh, testing uh, what we are developing right now and to, to make it better for the next release, sure. Yeah, hi. So I've faced this problem personally when I moved over to Debian. So I think this one, the easiest way to resolve this would be that you set a default value so the user doesn't have to enter something himself. So like the username phase comes first, I guess, and then the domain part comes. Uh, depends on if you're installing from the network or um, from a CD-ROM. Uh, if the username part comes first, then you can, you know, username hyphen desktop laptop, I think like Ubuntu does it. So you actually ease problems because the user doesn't have to guess. If the value is already there, he'll just click next, so. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the very, like, the hardest part of the whole thing about the Debian installer is that it's, it's very flexible and it's used by hardcore sysadmins and by clueless users. And it's very hard to actually have some way, but probably changing the order of question and, and actually, uh, could be helpful to answer the Daniels were raised, which was, okay, some people don't know that computers should have a name. Yeah, because if the user is advanced, he can enter himself, and if he doesn't know what it is, he'll just, just click next and be over with it, so. Mm. But problem with that, it's, it, yeah, and then we can probably figure out the domain later. I don't know. Uh, I just noticed people are adding about partitioning schemes to the document. Uh, I think we're talking about people who will not be doing partitioning um, in general. Like these are, these are people for whom a graphical partition manager is no more help than a text-based partition manager. They don't know what a partition is, they don't want to know what a partition is, and they shouldn't need to know what a partition is. So, I truly agree. Um, I mean, yeah, it would be great for the people who are sort of in between to be able to have a GUI version, but I think we need to make it just work. And maybe that means that they can't install it in a dual boot mode with their Windows machine, but you know what? These are folks who are not going to be successfully dual booting anyway. There are too many problems involved with a dual boot persistently, I think. My, my, I mean, my, the friends who uh, I, I've helped installing De Debian, uh, they, they want to get rid of viruses, Windows, and non-free software. They're like interested and want to uh, have free software and use free software and they actually are more happy now that they have Debian than they were with their previous system. So and they don't want to go back. I mean, they don't want to, to buy software to have to do stuff with their computer. Personally, I think the installer is simple enough now. I have never had any complaint about installing and basically it's done once and then they will keep running the system. Uh, I think we need to focus more on the desktop experience uh, and uh, uh, like the problem that occurs several times and all the times uh, instead of one that's happening once per computer and then you will have two years of stupid questions about why is this video not working. Uh, so partitioning, yeah, it could be made simpler uh, and there are some questions you could uh, get rid of and in Debian EDU we have done that by just asking a few questions and precede everything else. And it's perfectly possible to put one question in front of Debian installer. Do you care about all these things or do you just want everything to work? And you just have a yes, no question and partitioning and everything will just happen. It's perfectly possible to do that. Probably would be like uh, hundred lines of shell code and then you would have an installer that's so simple that anyone can install it. Uh, but I don't think we need that because the installer is so simple these days, it's very hard to actually uh, not be able to install and at the installation process you can just redo it if it didn't work out you just reinstall again because mm -hmm. you haven't anything sensible on your machine yet it's a fresh machine with a fresh installation uh, so 
if you get one question wrong, you just redo it and <coughs> flip the answer. But when you have a working desktop with hundreds of and thousands of documents you want to make sure are stored properly and uh, you want everything to be just working and not get in your way when you want to have uh, <coughs> your work done, that's where we have to focus. And that's where we have been really not doing a lot of work uh, recently uh, to improve the experience of users. Um. One, one quick comment. One of the other questions I would like to actually raise the priority, so it would be hidden from most users, is the one that asks for um, HTTP proxy. Who has used an HTTP proxy for the last two years? OK. But do you think that you could switch to export mode to do a demon install using? Uh, uh, would, would that be correct? Yeah, no? OK, we'll discuss on the Debian boot mail list, probably, but we'll see. So Yeah, I, I agree that we need more people interested in fixing the desktop. But at the same time, those who are not interested in the desktop should still appreciate the desktop. Yesterday on Debian IRC channel, there was somebody trying to configure DNS. And uh, he received like two pages of flame how crappy network manager is. And then they were telling him to use nano to edit ResolveConf and then use chutter to make sure that a network manager cannot write over ResolveConf. So I think that's also, also a social problem that people should recognize that some people are not interested in learning everything in the system. OK, I'd li I li I like, to, I like to move to the next point that was like feeling very controversial in my point of view. but. Uh, it's, I'd, like to, I'd like to switch this uh, SECFX configuration viable in the OTC default RCS to yes by default on new installations from now on. So what, what does that um, flag mean is that in case the, the file system is broken on boot, it tries to uh, fix it without asking uh, user input at all. Because right now, if you, it, it happened to a few friends, it means like if you, if you pull in the plug and it blocks the file system good enough, then when the file system comes back, well, when the computer comes back, they, they get prompted with a shiny black screen saying messages in English, asking to type scary command lines that people ever heard about, and it's only what you get, I mean. Uh, and if you don't know anything, the system will not boot either. So, I mean, a few friends, they were like, it's telling me that for a while now. I've tried to reboot it and, and again and again, and it's still not working. Could you help me? Because, uh, and I, I would like, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to ask these folks, who can use the Debian installer to actually have to edit the config file using nano right after uh, um, they're on? to actually set up to set this flag to yes. And I don't want to, to I'm not going to have this very holy boot message going graphical or uh, translated even, because I think it's, it would be hard work uh, to do. And I think it's, it's far more easier that we acknowledge that with gigabytes of, of data or even like terabytes of data, no one is actually going to answer the FSCK question manually, except these are like file system experts. But Uh, just, just to point you out, I'm quoting Josh Triplett on a recent uh, system D, com a common system D blog, uh, who, who acknowledged that it was strange, that it was not true. And also, later in the, just, just after that, in the Gobi, you have the last discussion uh, that I, I have been able to find about this uh, configure option. It, it's a message from Ted So, who is like, E2 FSCK maintainer, actually, and it's, it's from August uh, 2008, so it's three years old. Um, right. it's, a, it's not exactly that issue, but it's quite related. Um, I think one additional usability bug in the standard Debian installation is um, the intervals when um, FS checks are being run. I think um, when I, I recently um, helped someone or who had basically more or less a fresh squeeze installation, 
And um, I think with the defaults which are being installed on the standard file system, the, um, I think the interval is about 31 boot ups. And um, if you're using the computer just to, to check email once a while, this essentially leads to an, an E2SS check, which roughly runs at least a month, if not even, if not even more often, if two people share the same computer. And um, if you use EXT3, which is the default on, a really, on one of the typical hard disk sizes, that you have on a current computer, which has a terabyte hard disk, then it actually takes up to 20 minutes of completely scary, non-understandable messages. And I think um, we should either switch to, to, because in E2FS check, there's also the possibility to set a default, which is set in days, um, so that it's rather set to something along the lines of three to six months, or to even go one step further and see, simply have it triggered as a specific administrative task, like for example having a GNOME pop-up notification which says your computer hasn't been checked for half a year, would you want to check it with the next boot up? Because I think this is essentially also a usability problem for everyone who runs a server, because I think everyone knows the problem that the whole thing has been running for for the whole while and then you have a really serious problem, need to reboot it and this is always the time when the next E2FS check kicks in. So I think this is essentially not only not only a usability problem on the desktop, but I think something which even spans out to, to the typical server use. Interesting. Thanks, thanks, Lea. Um, I had my file system check yesterday uh, on my laptop when it was running on battery and I'm waiting for an option to postpone it. That shouldn't be that hard. Actually, it should do that by default. I mean, there is code that, there is logic already that knows how, that it should skip file system check on battery. It's there, so it's a bug. Oh, you have to install laptop mode for this? Okay, so. Another example of these small tools that should be installed by default. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, the FSCK uh, operation doesn't really have to happen at boot, and it doesn't really have to happen manually. In FreeBSD, they have a background FSCK that will actually run while the system is running. Maybe the Linux kernel should get one of those. I mean, I, 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 when I talk to, to change it back to some people around DevComp, some of them like, were really against it because they told me, hey, uh, when, I'm, when I'm on my server, I don't want to lose any files. And then I say, OK, but if you have a server, you're a sysadmin, so you know how to change that flag back to no, right? So is there anyone like, OK, so I'm, I'm, I'm with a convinced audience right now, so maybe I'm, it's flowed, but still. So I wanted to ask a question about sort of a more general, uh, like in terms of what we're doing here. I feel like we're identifying a lot of places where there are rough edges that have some pretty much common sense choices that we're not yet making in the distribution. Um, how are we going to resolve these things? Should, should these just be bugs that are filed? Is there a common uh, tag in the, in the BTS that we're using to say uh, common sense fix <laughs> or something like that? Um, how can we make it so that uh, these sort of things are encouraged and, and accepted within the distribution. Rafael? <clears throat> Actually, Ubuntu has this notion of paper cut, a really small fix that uh, enhance the uh, user experience. Uh, and they are collecting those and trying to fix a, a specific number for each release. Maybe we should have something similar. I don't know. Could you pass on the and we shouldn't really be focusing too much on changing the defaults either. We might be uh, able to use some of the other mechanisms we have around in the distribution, uh, preceding and, uh, and deb questions that can be uh, doing more sensible things during installation to detect what's a sensible default. Uh, for example, the proxy thing, the obvious thing to do for the installer, I believe, is to actually see if it can get on the internet. And if it can get on the internet, the proxy question is a really low priority question. If it can't, it's a high priority yeah. qu question. And that's probably like five lines of shellcode in, uh, in the code that's actually asking the profile question, uh, not the proxy question. Uh, I think we can do similar things with um, 
with uh, the FSDK thing. We can see if you're going to install a desktop and it is a laptop, then we flip the uh, default value to, to no or yeah, to yes. It, there are so many things we can do if we stop talking about what should be the default for everyone and instead discuss when should this be set to this value and when should it be set to that value and how can we automatically detect when the different scenarios are in place. Uh, so. I also wonder, uh, well, m most of those uh, pre-configuration are tied somehow to the usage of Debian installer, but more and more server, um, server or virtual servers or whatever are installed uh, just with the bootstrap, and here you don't get all those tiny pre-configuration things. It's something maybe that we should take in, uh, keep in mind at least. Because uh, it would be sad to have two different experiences depending on the way you install Debian. Um. And then? So, um, I remember uh, we had a few years ago uh, a drive uh, to reduce the number of questions that you are asked uh, in a default install. Mm. Um, so, we did uh, that kind of, um, of things. Uh, if a few dedicated people come together, uh, make a team, make a team, a mailing list, and launch the discussions that need to be launched and file the bugs that need to, uh, to, uh, uh, to be filed, it happens. But yeah, um, a few people have to get together and uh, form the group. One of, one of the. Um other thing I, I was actually uh, in desperate need uh, is when I did the, and I'm still ongoing, the transition from my friend's computer from Lenny to Squeeze. And I mean, there is no way you can actually, using graphical interfaces, we have, we have a lot of things that uh, you can uh, tweak your uh, apps, the, um, repositories graphically, you can do uh, security updates using graphical interface. You can tweak your packages and stuff. But there's no way you can actually change the line in apt, uh, etc. App source list, that list that says Lenny to squeeze. <laughs> like that single change is not possible using a GUI right now. Uh, except from that, if you, if you make that change using command line and then switch to DAPCONF priority critical. Then, and you can do a full upgrade of Lenny to Squeeze, and you get only three depth conf questions that probably should be uh, lowered, at, uh, asked at lower priority, which are uh, about restarting services of the JLibs for, for, for the JLibc, like restarting cron and GDM and addd and stuff. And I mean, come on, like. Who doesn't want to get the system? Uh, like, if you're doing a security update, like a full system upgrade, then you want to restart the services, right? So, uh, Jeremy, Odix? Oh. We. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, it's a little bit late because it comes from IRC, so we will go one step backwards. There was a question about does there exist a design guide for the different task cell targets? which is related to what do we install by default. I guess this is asking how should be done to design the task cell stuff. So as we have Joey around, I guess he can answer or not. And we have 10 minutes left. Um, there's not really a design guide for the task cell tasks. It's mostly common sense or just whatever seems best at the time. Come on, come on, well, that, That's why only a few people can modify the task sold tasks, unfortunately. <laughs> I just wanted to point out that, that if you do an upgrade while running GNOME, for example, and yeah. you allow it to reboot, to restart GDM, you're just fucked. No, so you're not. You're not. The, 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 the script does it perfectly. It says reloading later. Okay, uh, so then the, I experienced it with KDE and KDM, and you're fucked. That so was, that was, I mean, I've done the test from Lenny to Squeeze. Okay. With like switching from default desktop installs of Lenny to Squeeze, and it's been always fine. Okay. But then 
Okay. The last, the, the, the remaining pr uh, question that you asked and that I think you can't actually have it skipped is the one that says, I'm Grub, I want to upgrade myself, please confirm where I should trash your hard drive. Because that one is not going, I, I, I don't feel like we could skip that one. We need people to say, hey, um, please, that's my hard disk. So, uh, as far as I rem uh, remember, uh, GDM is fine uh, on upgrade, but GNOME really doesn't like uh, being upgraded, uh, GNOME in general, really doesn't like being upgraded while it's running. Uh, about every time uh, I have a significant upgrade to GNOME and I run it from, uh, uh, from, uh, from running GNOME, random, random GNOME programs just crash. Yeah, you have error messages popping up. But what, what, I, what I'm advocating is probably we can, if, if so, if we, if we have uh, some of the critical questions priority lowered too high, probably, and if we have some kind of, if you do some tests, I'm pretty sure we can come up with a software solution that could drive um, upgrades from old stable to stable and who, who, who could enable uh, our users to actually do that switch using graphical tool. Uh, I think it's a doable task because it's, it's not that hard. And it's, for GNOME, it pro it's probably about killing the demons that are popping up stupid error messages before they're upgraded. Uh, probably we can come up with something like that. I, I mean, okay, so it's a bit of a shame because I'm not caring much about KDE because I'm mostly install, uh, thinking about the default Debian installed right now. Uh, I've never tried to, to do some kind of, of uh, graphical... Uh, Upgrades using KDE, for example, or other desktop environments. But uh, yeah, it's something I would very much like us to, to have for, for Wheezy. Um, so, uh, another um, issue um, I see from, uh, 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 for non expert uh, upgrades uh, is this, uh, well, uh, is a con file handling. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to do uh, about it because um, DBKG can, can, cannot just always use a DabConf, uh, it's too low level. Uh, but, but maybe optionally or, uh, 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 and, um, uh, and also the messages have more hand-holding hmm. because uh, right now the question uh, is asked on the terminal uh, and uh, even, even if it was asked graphically uh, with the same prompts, hmm. People wouldn't know what to do, uh, how to do it. So uh, I, I maybe UCF brings part uh, of an answer uh, if it would just de default to uh, uh, to merge or something. Buxy, I, I remember that someone post was working on a patch for DPKG that would use DepConf to ask questions about conf files. Do you remember that 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 work? Uh, it's it is yes. It is any progress? In, it, Merge? No, nothing. It's like, but th there have been some code written for that at some point. Okay, yes. And we have five minutes more. Uh, one thing I was a bit pissed about also is like I think we should we should think about the use case of people who actually want to use a computer without any kind of internet connection at all. You still would. I mean, it's still a. a, a for some kind of work, it makes sense to actually have a computer that has no internet connection at all. Uh, and so in Squeeze, it's too late probably, but the, the, the multi-arc DVD, which is advertised as the only uh, installation medium that you, yeah, you, that you need, has this little bug that it has no network manager GNOME in it. So probably it's not, it's not a problem if you don't intend to actually use the, any kind of network connection at all for the whole com life of the computer. But if you're doing the install without an internet connection and then you go back to internet, then you're fine. So, and that, and I mean, that's it. that was a super test and could have been figured out uh, way earlier, but no one made it. So I think we should, uh, it's, and it's a good news. Now that we have uh, uh, a date for the freeze, which is July next year, June. No, June, sorry. Then, so it's June next year. So starting of, of July, we can do actually produce um, CD images and start testing them and see if the resulting desktop is working. And we can do tests with like, okay, NetInst, CD, DVDs, all that kind of installation media we have 
Uh. Well, I'm not burning, a th well, uh, Rafael was saying there's no reason to wait for the freeze. I mean, I'm not going to burn any DVD and find a spare full laptop that I can trash every week. I mean, I have to ask friends to do that. So, because you can test some stuff on, on virtualization, but ma like virtual machine, but some of them really needs real computer to, to, to do so. Very little needs a real computer to be tested. I've been installing daily uh, in periods or multiple times per day on the virtual machine and uh, you can test almost everything on the virtual machine. There's no need to burn a CD, you just put it on a USB stick and uh, if you have the spare hardware you do that, if you don't use a virtual machine. Come on, it's not that hard and if someone actually needs to do it. It's, it's not that hard. It's just but time, I, time, 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 time. It's a time sink with no limits, but yeah. I'm advocating the class of science sick if we start doing that after the freeze than before. But if people like are doing it right now, I mean... It's great. too late doing it after the freeze. There are so many problems you will discover after the freeze that the freeze will be pointless if we start after the freeze. Well, that was the bug I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, which is Network no Manager GNOME is not the DVD. It's totally unrelated to the freeze. It's the way we actually make the DVD and the CD. So that's a bug against CD image. Uh, so we have three more minutes. Uh, the, I'm pretty happy because the, the Gobi session has been like filled with many ideas, and I'm going to post that on the DevConf discuss main list and see at least. Is there, is there any other comments? Uh, one of the um, things that I expected to see in this talk coming into it was um, ways to remotely manage your um, less experienced users' workstations, either some kind of system where they have a menu option to set up a remote session with you, or where you just log in silently once in a while by SSH, but some way to open up whatever ports you need and actually set up the um, screen sharing or SSH or whatever else hmm. to automate some of that. I don't know if... R Rafael? Actually, with GNOME, there already is an option uh, that you can enable, uh, share your computer with. You can password protect it if you want, or you can disable that, depending on how and where the computer is located. I do that with my mother, so it's working fine. I mean, when I installed her, her computer, I just clicked this checkbox, and now, uh, well, I log back with SSH and connect over it, but SSH and VNC, but basically VNC is integrated in G GNOME Desktop, in the standard GNOME Desktop, so I don't know what more you'll, what do you want more than that? Um, I'm expecting that users would not necessarily remember to turn the service on and off and um, wouldn't want to leave it running all the time and basically just something more turnkey that really dumps it down. Anyway, I, I, I thought maybe that would be covered. It's kind of what I expected coming in here, a little. Not the whole thing. Well, my point is also that I'd like, I'd, like, I'd like those users to actually not need my help at all, which means no sure, need to actually remotely help them. Otherwise, I, I'd rather have them and see them and have a cup of coffee in real life, you know? That's, I mean, that's one thing. My friends could talk. Uh, then what do you do when you're in Bosnia? What? Then what do you do when you're in Bosnia? Right. Uh, well, they wait. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so there's a, a couple of bugs we could already feel. Some of those items means a hell lot more work. Um, I think I think there's no real proper process uh, already that exists, like a team of people who like to make the perfect desktop. Uh, I know that, for example, Rhonda has been doing a lot of work trying to fix bugs that uh, are reported against table. Um, 
there is a few things. Probably, maybe we can actually, if people are really interested, maybe you could gather uh, for a sprint at some point and try to fix as many of these desktop issues. I don't know. Um, I think there are a lot of work that can be that can be done, and and it's it's great that to see many people interested in that uh, making Debian uh, more friendly to our, our desktop users. Uh, so. What's your call for for it's it times up uh, probably? Yeah. So we have we have to yeah we have to we have to decide for user tag address. Let's let's do that. Yeah, that's pick one. Okay, we'll see like something like that. We'll see. I'm, I'm not hurrying you. So I'd say we, we close up the session and then come, and we, I'm going to post something on the main list. Uh, thanks for coming. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll work together on all that.